I'm Chef Michael Montgomery from the Culinary School of the Rockies in Boulder. And um, today we're going to cover a basic overview of squash. It's that time of year. Um, I know all of your summer squash, maybe you're starting to dwindle, but a lot of us still have squash in abundance. Um, we need to think about how we're gonna handle that squash, what we can do with it, maybe how we can preserve it. And then I just wanna give you some tips and show you a few examples of some winter squash or just a little preview of what's to come in the, in the upcoming months. Um, some of you maybe have begun harvesting your winter squashes. It's a little too early for that. So I have more summer squash to show you and talk about today than winter, but I'll definitely talk you through both categories, how we generally handle them. Beginning with both types, winter and summer, you should know right off the bat that botanically speaking, they're all fruits. These actually aren't vegetables. The seeds are on the inside. They're all fruits, just like a tomato is a fruit. Um, so that's very good to know. And starting with summer squash, there are so many different types of summer squash out there. The most common being probably something like a zucchini. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen a standard zucchini. However, they're doing a lot with zucchinis these days. This isn't the standard dark green color, but yet this is still called a zucchini. Um, all summer squash have a lot of water and they also have very, very thin skins. So keep that in mind when you're storing them. These squash need to be refrigerated after you've, after you've cut them from the vine. They should go into the refrigerator as quickly as possible. And if you bump them up against one another, they start to bruise quite easily. So because of that very, very thin skin and that high water content, they are gonna get quite bruised and get soft spots. So handle your squash with care. Um, winter squash is much more durable, but the summer squash, again, handle it with care. Don't let it bang up against one another when you're storing it. Give it a little space in the fridge. Try not to stack things on top of it, things like that. Um, and these are really not, will not last that long in your refrigerator. So I would say if you buy it at the farmer's market, if you cut it out of your garden, really you want to try to consume it within two to three days. Um, of course, the winter squashes or the hard squashes, they're going to last a lot longer. Um, these should be consumed very, very quick. So if you have a whole garden full of squash, try not to harvest them all at one time, unless you're planning on pickling or doing something like that with them. The types that I have in front of you that we have at the culinary school right now are simply standard green zucchini. Many of you have seen that. This is just a prettier, um, different shade of green, but it still is a zucchini. I have some yellow squash, sometimes called yellow zucchini. These are really beautiful. They're called Romanesco. Very similar to this zucchini, except Romanesco always have these really nice ridges. These work beautifully to slice down into rings and saute or steam that way because you can see their beautiful design in this ring shape. So I typically, if I have a squash that looks like this, I'll try to cut it straight down into coins, rings or discs, whatever you want to call it, just to showcase the beauty of this squash. And then what else I have in my basket to show you? These are actually in the family, good old cucumbers. Um, obviously they resemble the zucchini quite a bit. Remember, seeds are on the inside, so they are considered all fruit. How I like to cook my summer squash or my softer squash, first and foremost, I'd rather eat it raw, more than anything else. If I'm just cutting it out of the garden, if I just got it at the farmer's market, I'm gonna take it home and I'm try to, I will try to consume it as quickly as I can and I'll keep it raw. I'll make a basic vinaigrette, um, break my squash down to make it look pretty and eat it raw. Lots of fresh herbs, maybe a little green onion, something like that. And I am very, very satisfied. Of course, a little salt and pepper. Um, these are also very good to practice working with your knife. In my knife skill classes or when we teach knife skills at the culinary school, it's a really forgiving vegetable to begin with to learn how to properly dice or things like that because it's nice and soft and it's a pretty good shape. So break it down into a dice, turn it into a nice saute. You can roast that dice, you can steam it again and then use it for whatever you need. It's really lovely to serve inside an omelet. Very nice to mix with other, other summer or fall vegetables. Think about ratatouille, that nice combination of many, many different garden vegetables. This is always um, a big part of my ratatouille, things like that. Um, you can do a ton with it. Really, really nice to have. Very, very good for you and quick. You can keep your meals very, very quick and simple with your summer squashes. On the other hand, the opposite end of the spectrum, in the same family, 
but not quite so quick or easy, are all of the winter squashes, or the hard squash. Um, these, you should know right off the bat, do not need to stay in the refrigerator. The nice thing about these is when you harvest these in the fall, these can go well into winter in your pantry. If you keep them in a cool, dark, dry place, they're gonna last a few months. Unlike these in the refrigerator, like I said, two or three days. So what I have here as far as these, the winter squash, and these were hard to find. We're not quite there yet. In the upcoming weeks, we'll have many, many, many more to choose from. This is a standard butternut squash, and this is an acorn squash. Looks a lot like an acorn. Um, I would say butternut squash, if you like a nice sweet squash, this is probably the squash you're gonna find the most, and it really has a wonderful sweet flavor. With both of these types of squashes, I would say my preferred way of dealing with them is not to peel them, because it's really hard to take a vegetable peeler and get the rind off this type of squash. What I would rather do is just take my knife and go straight down through them. I'm going on one side of the stem though. Don't try to get your knife through that woody stem, it's not gonna work. So I'm just going down one side of the stem. And I have a pretty sturdy knife here. Cut them in half. And now in this state, I'm, I would just take a little spoon, take the seeds out, put them cut side down onto a sheet pan, even just a little bit of water, throw them into the oven and roast them. And I would say at 375 degrees for about an hour, you'll take a knife, when you pierce through that rind and you get to the flesh below, when it feels nice and soft, you know it's ready to go. At that time, let it cool, turn it over, take a spoon and just scoop out this lovely roasted flesh. Probably the easiest way to break it down, there's no peeling, there's no dicing involved with these hard squashes, and the flavor you get from a roasted squash is really unbelievably good. The reason I cut it and put it cut side down on the sheet pan, the sugars start falling out of the squash, hit my very hot sheet pan, and they begin to caramelize. So what you get is this really fantastic layer of caramelization on this side of the squash, which provides a really great flavor in any food. So think about dicing the roasted squash to put into your risotto to finish a lovely risotto. Or maybe you just want to spoon it out and make a nice roasted squash soup. One of my favorite things in the fall into winter. You know, finish it with a little maple syrup, maybe a little sage. Um, really nice and warming on a cool fall night. Um, these foods get me really excited at the end of summer because I start thinking ahead into the cooler months and I start craving, you know, the heartier things, heartier squash, things like that. With the acorn squash, again, I would much rather, instead of trying to peel this, which as you can just tell by looking at it, really, really difficult to peel, cut this one in half, only go the other way. So with the butternut squash, I went straight down right beside that woody stem. With this one, and any squash that's, that's this shape, I will go this way, take the seeds out, and then I'll roast them in half just like this usually cut side down, and then you can flip them over. You can either scoop out the flesh at that point and use it like I was talking about into a soup, into a risotto, make a really lovely ravioli filling with roasted squash, something like that. Or, instead of scooping it out, keep it just like this and use this as a cup on a plate and serve something like a grain salad inside this squash half. Really nice presentation, certainly for the fall months, holidays, and then you can, once, you, once you're done with your whatever salad you've placed inside your squash, certainly eat the roasted squash around it. Very nice presentation and really good use for some of your harder squashes that are nearly impossible to peel. Some other very common squashes in this hard or winter squash family um, that we don't have yet. Kobucha, the Japanese pumpkin, really beautiful little green pumpkins. Um, you'll see those around a lot of people use those simply as decoration around Halloween, things like that. Those are really wonderful to eat. Um, I handle them just like I'm talking about these. However, those are a little easier to peel, and I'll actually peel those raw, dice them, and I like to put them in stir fries, things like that. I handle those a little differently because they tend to be a little softer and a little easier to work with the little green Japanese pumpkins. Pumpkin is a prime example of a lovely winter squash. Again, if I'm making pumpkin pie or something like that, I try to avoid the canned pumpkin pie filling. I use my own pumpkins. I usually get a Hubbard squash. I roast them both. I scoop out that roasty flesh 
And I, that's the base of my pumpkin pie, which I can't wait for that. Um, another note on when you're harvesting squash, if you have the option, or you're actually out in your garden cutting your squash, if you leave a little bit more length on the stem of your winter squash, um, they're actually going to retain a little more moisture and they're going to stay um, moist a little bit longer in your pantry. So if you think about it when you're cutting them or if you're in the market and you see some with long stems, four inches is really um, what we're looking for to keep them nice and fresh once they've been harvested. So think about that. So if you don't have the option, use it a little sooner versus storing it. Hope this answers some of your basic squash questions and maybe gave you some cooking tips. I am Chef Michael Montgomery. Thanks.